I believe I've got Phil Manning on the phone. G'day, Phil. It is you. Rusty, how are you doing? Mate, fabulous. And how are you going? And where are you in the world? Well, I'm in Melbourne. And, yep. uh, yeah, and uh, we're, we're, we're not quite as locked down as we were, but, uh, you know, we're here and, and happening. And uh, I've been... I've been uh, I've been back in Melbourne now for probably 20 years or so. Before then, I lived up on the uh, up in the Gold Coast hinterland for about 16 years. But um, overall, I, I've always sort of considered Melbourne my home, you know, even though I'm originally from Tasmania. Yeah, but it was, I mean, it was Melbourne where your musical career really took off, wasn't it? Back in yeah, uh, well, back in the 60s. <laughs> yeah, the 60s. Yeah, well, I. I started playing, uh, obviously, in, in Tasmania. Um, I'm originally from Devonport. And um, uh, and then I went off to art school and uh, when I was 17 and continued sort of playing there. And um, bef- but not long after I turned 18, I got a job uh, playing professionally with Tony Worsley and the Blue Jays in 1966. And so I've been a, a, a pretty much a professional musician ever since. Wow, what age did you pick up a guitar? Were you very young, or was it just something you sort of picked up towards sort of art school time? Uh, no, I, I started playing about when I was fifteen. Uh, I, I had done eight years of piano, eight, you know, classical piano. Um, but by the time the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and the Yardbirds and all that came along, I I really just all I wanted to do was have a guitar and play, you know. It just seemed like the cool thing to do at the time. And um, uh, so, yeah, I started playing guitar at 15. Yeah, and and, and who, you mentioned the Beatles and, and stuff. Who were your sort of mentors, your inspirations? Who were the ones that were, you want, oh, I want to shred like that? Well, the, obviously the Beatles and the Stones and the Yardbirds and the Kinks and all those English beat bands, you know, the... That uh, English invasion, as they call it, um, that was what really set uh, me and a whole generation of people off on wanting to play music. Uh, and then through that, I gradually learned about Bo Diddley and Chuck Berry, and uh, and then uh, you know, bit by bit discovered there were people like Muddy Waters and Sonny Boy Williamson, Buddy Guy, and Junior Wells, who were a big influence uh, on Matt Taylor and myself. And um, and then, of course, uh, when I was at art, school, art college, I, I discovered all these amazing uh, acoustic, you know, the, the rural blues guys like uh, Robert Johnson, Lead Belly, Blind Blake, Blind Lemon Jefferson, Blind Willie McTell, uh, Blind Boy Fuller, Blind Willie Johnson, God, there's so many old blind ones. Um, Mississippi, John Hurt, Skip James, it just goes on. There were just so many of them. And um, and it, it's really funny, you know, for a, you know, for a white boy from Tasmania to have just absolutely fallen in love with this sort of primitive uh, music from the deep south of America. It's really, it's really amazing. And... And to this day, sort of people often ask me how that was that that happened, and and the only answer I can ever have is that I just loved the sound of it. I just the sound of it is just, and it still intrigues me to this day. Yeah, um, it it's just such a fabulous sound. You know? Yeah, and, and you've um, stayed true to it pretty much for the the, the, the fifty years since. Well, well, yes and no. I've I've always been a a bit of a. Uh, I've always had one of my feet in the pop world, and um, I've, I've, I still I love good pop music. You know, I mean that was why I fell in love with the Beatles and stuff. I, I love good songs and I love good pop music, but I really the stuff that really gets me in the pop, even in the pop world, the stuff that really gets to me is stuff that's rooted very deeply in blues music, and. Um, and and yeah, that's that's in that in that regard. Yes, I've I've always I've always sort of had a, 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 at least a at least a sort of high content of blues music in my shows, and uh, and and in recordings. Uh, but I've also, as I said, I've also been a little bit on a little bit towards the pop world as well, which I think 
has been has been good for me in that uh, I have I've, I've sort of always been able to take a sort of slightly fresh uh, view of things and. Yeah, it's very easy when you sort of stick to one sort of thing. Say you call yourself blues and blues alone, it it can be very easy to get actually stuck in that thing, you know, of of oh well, I won't do that because it's not quite blues, you know, and it can be a bit a bit restricting. But nowadays, of course, there's all these young blues guys coming through, and they they're all putting their own mark on it, and it's uh, so blues is really an evolving form of music anyway. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned the young guys coming through. So uh, you said who you listened to back then. Who are you listening to now? Who's on your sort of playlist when you get in the car? Well, actually, I don't get in the car anymore <laughs> much. Um, uh, All right. OK. Uh, no, when you're on the no, tram. No, 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 I, I, I actually don't drive anymore, but that's another story. But um, no, I, uh, I tend to... Uh, I tend to be a bit of a YouTube freak, I'm afraid, and uh, I, I love YouTube. It's, to me, it's like a library, and um, and yeah. of course, the people that I, I listen to, uh, particularly nowadays, uh, are, are, are young people like this. People like a gorgeous young woman named Molly Tuttle, who's just the greatest acoustic guitar player. Uh, Molly Tuttle and um, uh, and then a young guy named Billy Strings, and they play bluegrass music, you know, mainly, and sort of modern versions thereof. Um, and then there's, there's uh, you know, a bunch of uh, blues guy, younger guys uh, coming on, you know, people like uh, uh, Kirk Fletcher, who, you know, plays, has played with the uh, fabulous Thunderbirds a bit. And, uh, and of course, there's, I've got all my old favourites that I really love. I... I still love Eric Clapton and Jeff Beck, particularly Jeff Beck's doing some amazing things. And and people like Jimmy Vaughan, um, you know, uh, Kid Ramos, you know, some of the, they're great players. And I, I li- try to listen to sort of a broad, a broad sort of spectrum of things. I uh, just discovered a lovely mandolin player named Eva, Eva Holbrook. Um, and and, uh, and of course, then there's an the absolute monster mandolin player named Chris Thiele, who uh, who's just the most awesome talent you've ever heard. So yeah, I listen to stuff like that. I listen to a, I love a, I love a lot of Celtic music too. I listen to a lot of Irish stuff, and um, I, I've got a pretty wide taste in it. Sometimes I listen to Turkish music. Um, yeah. Well, hey, that's a that's enough for me to go on tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've just gone down the YouTube wormhole right there and then. Oh but, yeah, it's very easy to do. But yeah, and you mentioned, of course, some of our Blues Fest favourites like Beck and Jimmy Vaughan and uh, and stuff, and yourselves. I mean, you and Chain and Matt Taylor have covered a fair number of Blues Fest between you. Have you got any yeah, idea how yeah. many? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, actually, um, the, the the running commentary on it apparently is uh, that I I seem to have done eight or nine, I've, and I've certainly done about eight or nine with Chain as well. But at, look, at one stage I'd done early on, I'd done nine out of eleven. So uh, in the first years of it. Uh, I did nearly every one, and then of course, as the sh- as the festival got bigger and I moved uh, away, because at the time I was living not far away, and yeah. uh, and then as well, I moved back to Melbourne. I didn't get it as often, but yeah, um, Chain's done it quite a lot, and and then of course, there's been years where uh, perhaps Chain has done it, and then I've done a solo spot on a different day, um, so th- that sort of things happened as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I can certainly consider myself a sort of regular there anyway. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I reckon so. Um, and you, as you say, in the, the first few years, uh, you were in one, two and three. And then I think you had a breather. Then it was something like five, six, seven, eight, nine <laughs> sort of thing. You were you or Chain yeah. or both were, were forever there. Um, and. And that sort of brings me to the question. You've had a great solo career, well, you know, this 50-year career where you've played with just about everybody and stuff, but you're intrinsically linked with Matt Taylor and Chain and, and that sort of 
that band of ever-changing musicians that uh, yeah, that have well, become well, iconic uh, and legendary in 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 Australia. Yeah, well, the, that and and this is the 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 real point there is that uh, we we had Black and Blue as a hit in 1971, and of course we had Michael Gudinski as a manager at the time, and uh, Michael did a marvelous job to actually push the band and get the band into the charts and uh, and that sort of thing. So we had that big hit with Black and Blue and then a, a slightly, not quite as big, but another hit with uh, Judgment. And, and then, of course, we had the album Toward the Blues, which uh, is still in print today. It's never been out of print since 1971, which is quite amazing. But that's a huge... That has to be almost... I would suggest uh, certainly an Australian record. Um, well, yeah, well, it is an Australian record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Oh, sorry, I oh, know I couldn't resist that. <laughs> it was just too good. Oh um, dear. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I I agree with you. I I I think it's highly likely. I don't know of any other Australian rock album or blues album or whatever you want to call it. I haven't heard of any other Australian album. Uh, that has been permanently on release, uh, and and every time you know, like when it went from being vinyl to CD, it it moved across to CD and and without going out of print or anything like that. So, um, yeah, that's, that's and it's it's still it's still out there and it's still selling. And every now and again, you know, someone uh, you get someone that says, "Oh, I, I chewed up three vinyls and now I'm on my second uh, CD or third CD or something, you know. Yeah. So, uh, well, hey, um, looking back now, we're just talking about this is the longest sort of album that's been cut forever on sale, for want of a better word. When you picked up the guitar back then at 15 and go, oh, I'm going to join a band, is this where you saw yourself 50 years later? Oh, no. No, I mean, I, I mean, we got a glimpse of it when... Um, uh, I, uh, Matt and I, I I did a tour with Muddy Waters and, and Matt and I did a tour with Muddy Waters so I did two tours with him uh, but that was probably where we sort of got the first real glimpse of oh you know here's a guy that was nearly 70 at the time and um, and here he is he's out doing it you know and uh, and doing it really really well and I suppose uh, prior to that, we we never really figured anything much about that. I, I think we all figured that by the time we were 30, we'd be burnt out. In fact, there was a very funny thing. Um, I left Chain for a time uh, in the mid-70s and went solo for a while. And um, <laughs> anyway, one day, I was actually, at the time I was 26, and I opened up the Melbourne Age, and here I was, on uh, the second page or something like that. And the heading was old man rock goes it alone. <laughs> and uh, I was mortified, you know, so I was 26, I was considered old. <laughs> um, so no, we, we, I don't, I don't think any of us uh, figured uh, that, you know, we'd be doing it, still doing it 50 years later. Yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, uh, we're absolutely delighted that we are, and still doing it well, I may add. And we're looking forward well, to let's having. Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're really looking forward to seeing Chain again at Blues Fest. I mean, after all, it's sort of your home by the number of times you guys have appeared here. Who's yes. who's? Who, I mean, obviously there's you and Matt Taylor, but who who else are you bringing with you in the band this time? Ah, uh, well, of course we'll have. Uh, the wonderful Dirk Dubois on bass. Um, Dirk, of course, is uh, he's he's played with everyone too. He's like, uh, oh God, I couldn't I couldn't remember them all. But uh, he's, he's worked with Mel Eastick and oh God, it just it just escapes my mind all the people he's played with. But it's an awful lot. But he's been the bass the bass player in Chain now for over twenty years. So uh, he he certainly uh knows the material by now <laughs> um you yeah, know and uh dirk's dirk's great he, he really just holds the thing down and 
and really uh, keeps the bottom end of the band just sitting there. You know, it's really great. And in the last six years, we've had uh, a guy named Trevor Draper, Trapper, as he's known, Trapper from Adelaide, has been our drummer. Um, Little Goose, uh, Barry Little Goose Harvey was the drummer before that, the all-time, long-time time drummer. Um, uh, but he got sick and couldn't tour anymore, unfortunately. And um, so we, we got Trapper from Adelaide. He's been with us uh, for, like I said, about six years now. And he and Dirk work fantastically together. They're just a, a really tight, really gutsy hold it together rhythm section you know and um so that's great we've we've uh and and we're 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 a very very stable with this lineup you know i, I feel any anyway, rate we're all we're, we're all sort of hoping that well this lineup will see us out you know for the next 30, <laughs> for the for the next 30 years absolutely well i look forward to that i look forward to the the centenary of chain that that'd be cool but hey Phil, thank you, thank you very much for your time, and we look forward to seeing you at Blues Fest with all the classics of Black and Blue and Judgment. And uh, uh, I remember when I was young, I presume you still go through the great classics in the set list. Oh yes, yeah, we still. We, uh, you know, there's a certain a number of things that uh, I'm sure that we'd get booed off stage if we didn't do them. You know, <laughs> and uh, you know things like thirty two twenty and. Um, grab a snatch and hold it, you know, the, the, basically uh, the, the singles and most of the Toward the Blues album are, are sort of essential playing for us. And not only that, uh, we, we, despite the time that's gone by, we really still love playing them because one of the great things about, uh, about blues music is even though we have you know, fairly strict arrangements in some areas of, of our music. There's also the area that is is open to improvisation and 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 the the feel of the day. You know, so we uh, we still get challenged by it, and we still have a ball improvising, finding new things out, and um, you know, and st- and we still still have that little thing where you know sometimes maybe before the show someone will say, hey, listen, why don't we do this in such and such a song. We go, oh yeah, that's a great idea, and so that might, and then that little change might get added to the, to that arrangement for that song. And so uh, things are always evolving. It's not like we go out on stage and play exactly the same thing every night. It's never been like that. Never will be. Yeah, and and that in itself is exactly why. The only way to experience music really is to see it live and support live bands, be they of your vintage or be they guys that have been playing together for two or three weeks. It's so yeah, important yeah. that they get the support and people go, yeah, okay, we'll see you in a few years' yeah. time and you'll be, yeah. you know, wonderful. Phil, thank you very much for your time and travel safe, all of you guys, and we'll see you on the Blues Fest fields at Easter. Wonderful, and we're looking forward to it, I can tell you.